if you're watching this video, which I guess you must be, then you're either interested in buying a Pershing, interested in buying a yacht, or you just love dreaming about yachts in general. Well, let me tell you, this Pershing 64 that I'll be showing you today will interest you in whichever category you fall. She has those sexy lines that have made Pershing such an iconic brand, a sophisticated Italian interior, a great layout, and she doesn't hang around. Her name is First Lady. Let me start with the doesn't hang around bit. Pershing have always been known for their performance and the 64 model is no exception. The standard factory specs give a top speed of 46 knots for this yacht and a cruising speed of 40. She has two MAN engines of 1,550 horsepower each tied to Arneson drives. For the benefit of new viewers to the channel, Arneson build surface piercing propulsion units known as surface drives. Each propeller is positioned close to the surface of the water and pointing in the direction that you want to go in. You can always tell a yacht with surface drives from that fantastic rooster tail that they generate. That and the incredibly tight turns you can make with them. We took First Lady to an anchorage close to Saint Maxime in the south of France and here we could appreciate something of her layout. Ample sunbathing space at the stern, comfy seating, a cosy dining area, and a handy grill for your Angus cheeseburger with bacon and fresh salad. The window dividing the aft deck and the lounge slides down so that the entire area is in the fresh air. And actually the lounge is a very pleasant place to be with a social seating area, a television, and look at this unusual feature, a raised chaise long, allowing you to recline and relax, but still enjoy your surrounding seascape. Now some people prefer not to see the helm station on a yacht, but in truth, it's not an easy thing to hide on a boat of this size, so Pershing have made it into an attractive feature, something akin to a Formula One cockpit and very well positioned for optimum visibility. That's on the starboard side, while on the port side is a small stairwell to a well-appointed galley with plenty of work surfaces for spreading out those Angus burgers as you're assembling them. Back up the steps. Make a legal U-turn and down the next steps to the cabins. I don't know whether Pershing do this deliberately, but the first cabin you see is the VIP, and I suspect that many will think that this must be the master. It really is nicely put together with plenty of storage space and an ensuite bathroom. On the starboard side is a surprisingly wide twin cabin, again with an ensuite bathroom. But the surprise comes when you descend a few steps to the port side and open the door on what actually is the master stateroom. This is a very spacious cabin with plenty of closet space, another chaise long, large windows, and of course that important ensuite bathroom. But where can I put the tender, I hear you say? And what about the crew quarters and the engine room? Well, I don't want to disappoint you. So here they are. The tender garage is a traditional transom lazarette. Remember that having Arneson drives necessitates a large swim platform, since the drives are under the platform itself. And it's another feature that makes Pershing such a popular brand. Before I show you the crew quarters, let me say that on a 64-foot yacht, it's highly unlikely that the captain will be living full-time on board. He really just needs somewhere to lay his head during cruises with the owner. Access is from this hatch, and his cabin and bathroom is here. If 
finally that engine room that so many viewers like to see. This particular yacht has 607 hours on the engines at the time of filming, which is quite low, and a brief chat with the captain left me feeling confident that the machinery on board has been well maintained and properly serviced. Before buying any yacht, it's always advisable to have a survey first, and from what I've seen here today, I feel confident that First Lady would survey well. When I film these yachts, I do often find myself fantasizing about owning one one day. I mean, some of them are so big, it stretches even my imagination to think of ever being able to afford one. Others are not so much my taste, but this yacht sets my pulse racing because it's not outside the realms of possibility to be able to buy something like this one day. She's priced at well under a million euros. She's a 2009 model, so still quite modern in yacht years and you can run her with an absolute minimum crew, I mean one captain, and then perhaps call in somebody to give assistance as and when you really need them. For such an affordable boat, she has a very luxury yacht feel to her. I'm almost talking myself into getting a bank loan here, and if you too feel the need for Pershing speed and the Pershing experience, then I'm going to put details of a colleague of mine on screen in a moment. His name is Sebastian Clave. He knows more about Pershings than any other broker I've ever met. But also if you're a first time buyer or a repeat buyer, he's got tons of experience in how to make a deal happen smoothly. So do reach out to him. He'll be happy to hear from you.